Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Stylish Nigerian YouTube channel. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your love, for your support. If you are new to the channel, you're welcome. If you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please, I would appreciate for you to hit on my subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel already, please. And then you can click on the join button on the home screen to join and become a member of the Stylish Niger family and then if you want to register for my online classes you can just see my number on the description box on the comment section so send me a message on whatsapp okay guys so in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to cut and sew a shirt booboo yes it is actually a shirt booboo because i'm just going to try and describe it i it has a round collar and then it has a button down so that's what we're going to do you saw it like a shirt but it's actually a boo boo oh my gosh that's going to really be interesting and it's really classy and cheeky and oh gorgeous definition gorgeous and stylish so that's what we're going to learn how to do today i just can't wait to rock it and just go effortlessly that's what we're going to do today okay so guys if you find this video helpful please subscribe to my um like the video all right yes i keep saying subscribe like the video and then share it with your soul colleagues okay guys so follow me on all of my social media platforms facebook pinterest instagram threads all at stylish niger let's get started straight into the tutorial please like this video as you're watching it now just click on the like button drop your comments if you have any questions let's get started guys okay guys so this is how i said the bubble is going to look like it's going to have a round color but it's going to be elephant like this one so this is the fabric that i'm going to be making use of is four yards of fabric so you can see i divided it into two so two two yards as i just shared it this long piece of four yards you divide it into two pieces so the next thing i'm going to fold the two that's i'll fold them each each straight straight following my the long strap as i'll just fold them together and then i'll place it on the table bringing now two inches allowance for the front piece so that's it i finished folding it and the full length i'm going to be using 60 inches so for the wideness of my booboo you can see the two inches there that i use for the button allowance you run it up down so the sleeve is going to be about 26 so i just use what i have that's the wideness of my fabric. That's what I use. So that's going to be like for the elephant part of the booboo. So the next thing we're going to do now, we're going to add our neckline. It's a simple and process. So that's the front piece. That's the back piece is on top. So that's what we're going to be marking. So I'll mark two and a half inches. That's going to be for the back neckline, the wideness, both the back and the front. So and then for the back neckline, I'll use one inch and then for the front, I'll use about two inches. So you can see that's what I'm doing. So for the front, that's why I came down for the front neckline. So you can see, like I said, the front one is the one that is at the down is bigger. So now I'll cut out the up one because the front one is two inches bigger than the front, that's, than the back in placing because of the zip, because of the button, sorry. So I've cut out the neckline so that's the one inch for the back so i'm just going to shift the back one to the side so that's the front one now i'm trying to deepen the front one just a little bit with about another half of an inch or one inch depends on how deep you want it to be for mine the back was one inch while the front is 1.5 inch so i notch the allowance part that's the the button allowance part so that's much so i'll keep the back piece on the side now and then i'll open up the front piece because that's what we're going to be working with so i've opened it now so after opening so you can see how it is looking so what i'm going to do now take this back to my machine i'm going to stitch so i use overlock to lock that edge if you don't have an overlock you can just fold it like that but since I, I just, and you can fold it, you can see as I'm saying, doing it, and just fold it and then place it. But since I have overlock, I just lock the edge. And so the next thing is just for me to place it down, and then I'll sew it down and secure it, my own. So my own, I'm going to place it down, not wrap, stitch it out, just stitch it straight like that to the down part. I'll do the same thing to the other side. After everything, so I've done that, I've ironed it, so you can see it's looking neat and straight. 
So I'll place them and then pin them together from up to the down. So because you need them to stay together and then bring the back piece now and place them on the shoulder and then join them on the shoulder part. That's the tutu shoulder. But don't join the side. So after that, the next thing we're going to do will cut out the collar. So to cut out the collar, you measure around the neckline. You measure your own neckline or your client's neckline. It depends on how tight you want it to be. So mine, I measured my own. So at the end of the day, I got about 16 inches for my neckline. So that's what I will use to cut out my collar. That's 16. So you just measure it around like that and then check. Okay. So the next now divide my the measurement into two. So my bottom paper is already folded into two. So dividing it, so I'll measure eight inches. When you divide 16 into two, you are going to have eight inches. So that's eight inches now. See, I just wrote a straight line on that paper just to like a starting point. Okay. So the next thing that's the eight inches point. The next thing from that eight inches point, I'm going to I'm just trying to trim out just to make sure okay and then the next thing i'm going to come down by half of an inch that's from my start line i came down by half of an inch so from that half of an inch my color is going to be two inches after sewing it's going to be like 1.5 so i'm just trying to so I, I i like blended it in it's not straight so that's why i say i'm using my pattern curve to like curve it into the edge of my of the line that i marked you understand because the neckline is not straight so you see it's easy it has a little bit of curve not like straight mm -hmm. so after that i'm going to mark all of the two two inches now that i'm using for my color so i'll mark it first of all I'll mark it around like that on all just mark it to the end after marking it to the end now i'm going to use my pattern curve again to curve it it's not entirely straight so that's why you see I'm doing it like this because our neckline is not straight so you can see so I'm just this pattern curve is really doing me well for this new color I love it so you can see curved it nicely so the next thing I'm going to I'm just trying to blend it a little bit and then on this side part I'm going to reduce that part a little bit so on that part I'm going to come up again I took out another half of an inch so I blended it into that part and then make a curve on this part so you depend that part you can actually do it however you want so you can make it round you can make it straight depends on the shape you want to give to the color so i curved mine and then i'll just cut it out right now so that's what i'm trying to do so i just cut out so you can see it's looking good so the next thing i'll place this on my fabric and then i'm going to cut it so you can see how it is looking so always check your color so if, if there is need for you to shape those edges, you can go ahead and just give it any shape you want. So you can see it's looking good. I love the outcome. So the next thing, I'll place this now on my fabric and then I'll cut out. So you are going to iron interfacing on this, um, on your fabric. So you can see I'm cutting it out now. So and then I'll add hasty. I cut out two pieces, two separate pieces, you understand? As it is unfold like that, I cut out two separate pieces. So those two separate pieces, I'll iron ST on it, and then I'll go and stitch it. So I'll, the part that I'm going to stitch is the straight side, the side that is looking a little bit straight. That's that part. The curvier part is the down part. That's the neck part. This part that you can see the curve. That's the part we attach to the dress. That's the first line we drew. That's the neck. That's the part that we attach to the dress. Then why the other part that is not too Covid. That's the second line we marked. Mm -hmm. That's the next side. So iron interfacing on it, and then I'll stitch it on this straight part, not the curve part, and then stitch the edge. So that part is the the other part is the curve part. So after stitching, so you can see how it is looking now. So I'll stitch it on that straight part. I'll show you how we're going to to fix it now. I would still take it to the machine for you to see. So I'm just trying to check. Make sure you double check your color before you start stitching. So the next thing what I'm going to do now, I have two parts. So that part, now I'm going to reduce one part. You understand? The inside one, I'll reduce it by quarter of an inch. So I'm trying to take out quarter of an inch. I'll cut it out. Just cut it out. And then the other part that I did not cut out, the quarter of an inch that I took out from that side, 
I'll iron it down on this other side. So I'll explain more here now so you can see. So you can see the other part that I did not cut out. I ironed the quarter of an inch inside and then that edge, don't stitch it to the end so it will be easy for you. So I left that a little bit of opening on the side. Okay. So the next, you can see it is looking equal because I trimmed out one part and then fold the other part inside. That's why it's looking equal. So now that part that I did not fold, that's the straight part that I did not, that I trimmed out. That's the part I'm going to stitch on my collar first. So I'll do it right side facing right side. So because of that edge that I said don't stitch, so it, it will be easy for me to place it in like that. So you can see I'll be able, I'll be able to place it in because I did not stitch it to the end. So I'll stitch it down now. I'll just stitch it round. Like I said, that's the part that I trim. That's the part you will stitch first on the collar. And then the other one that you fold in and iron it down. That's the part we use to cover it. So I'm, I'm stitching that first part now. Just stitch it around. Make sure that it enters very well. This side can, can, it can be headache. It can give headache. You know? so, but just make sure. Do your measurements accurately. So that's the edge. So I'm just trying to check. At the end of the day, I was happy. It entered properly. There was no excess, no much. It has entered well. So I cut out all of my threads. So the next thing, I see the other part that I folded down. So it is easy now. So that part that I lose, you understand? You know that edge that I told you to lose? I'm going to secure it down now before we continue. If not, you are going to have one kind of funny open here. So I'll just turn it back and then just give it a tiny stitch back to close up that edge of the part that we lost. Okay. So after that, I'll just cut out my thread. And then I'll fold it back. So because of that, other part is already folded in. I've folded it in and ironed it. So you are just going to make sure, just use your hand to tuck it in nicely. So you can see this side, you have to be careful because you are going to run a very clean stitch. This is what we differentiate amateur from mature sewers. Because we need a very clean stitch here. Clean stitch. But if you are a beginner, no problem. You can use necklace and cover the stitch. <laughs> That's what I used to do before, so I'm not going to lie anyway. So just, uh, so just give it a clean stitch now. After that, you stitch it to the end. So after stitching it to the end, so you can see what I have. So the outcome, it was fine. It was okay. With that, it's easy. You just secure it down back. Just use a clean stitch, like I said, so you can see. And then the next thing, I'm going to pin the neckline, like as if I'm the bottom level. So what I noticed, this part, I should have brought out a little bit. So if you are sewing for your customer, bring out a little bit. That is, leave an extra of an inch, so that in case the neckline is too tight. You have extra. So the next thing, just pin it down. After pinning it down, we're going to, as you can see, I've pinned it down to the end. So we're going to start measuring our final measurement. You can see it is a very simple booboo. So that's the edge. You know, the back and the front, we cut them the same before. So any excess, just trim out on the edge. So the next thing, I'm going to come to my slip opening. For this, you can use 10 inches, 9 inches. So for mine, I think I, I use 10 inch. I use 9 inches. So just measure from the shoulder to that nine inches and then you mark it. And then the next thing depends on how wide you want your booboo to be. For this, the hip is 40 originally. So I'm going to make it 50. So 50, when you divide 50 into 4, you are going to have 12.5. So you place it on the center part, that center placket, that 12.5. So I'm just going to place it, okay, on that center part, like that center of the button. And then you measure it down from that nine inches point or ten inches point so you can see that's what i'm trying to do now so i'll start marking it uh -huh. so that's the 12.5 so i'm just trying to make sure that i'm accurate because you can just check your sleeve opening from where you stop the sleeve opening that's where you are going to start measuring from okay so that's what i'm trying to double check uh -huh. You can see, just make sure, don't rush it. Check all of your measurements accurately well, so it's, you don't go to overwork. 
and then from there you are just going to mark it that my 12.5 inches now mark it down from that point now to the down so what i did here i'm going to just keep marking it mark it and then i'll repeat it on the other side of my boob also so you see i'm marking them down now just make sure double check all and then mark so but i'm not going to get to the down part so i'm going to leave a little bit of slit so the same so you can see that's why i'm trying to pull my boob up so the camera will capture it so i will not get to the down leave a little bit of slit so i came up you can see from that point just about 15 inches so it depends on how much boob and um, opening you want so that's what you will use so that's where i'm going to stop and then i'll stitch it so after stitching that's all i'll do the same thing to the other side so i got some couple of buttons so these are the buttons i'm just trying to check which one to use at the end of the day so after stitching that stitching that i explained i'll just place it on my mannequin and then i pinned it so i've not added the buttons yet i just pinned all of the neckline so like i said you can run a stitch on it if, if you don't want to go through the process of putting button holes you can just use a straight stitch to attach it down and then put your buttons as fancy buttons on it but i noticed that this one that has buttons and this shirt on is not really common so it's it's better you do it just do your button hole and then put your button so to make it different from those ones that they put but as a beginner if you don't want to go through stress you can just leave it that way and then put your button hole and then fix your buttons on all of the points so for the buttons i'm not going still going to get to the down part so when i get to my knee that's where i'll stop my button so you can see i'm trying to place the buttons how it will look like okay so once i get to that knee point i'm going to stop so you can take it all the way down but i'll i'll i'll, I'll stop mine around that point okay so i'm going to show you more now what i'm trying to say okay so this is what i was trying to explain some of my buttons will run from that top and then when it gets to around my knee point i'm going to stop so i'm going to have like an opening here you understand i can put i can still decide to run some buttons down as fancy but i will not put button holes so thank you so much if you find this video helpful please hit on the like button share this video you can see the dress came out really fine I can't wait to rock this dress okay so if you find this video helpful please like the video share this with your friends and your so colleagues thank you so much i'll see you in my next video bye, -bye.